Winnipeg's new music festival kicks off this weekend, a week-long celebration of contemporary music from Canada and abroad with monumental orchestral works and trailblazing guest ensembles. Co-curator and festival director Harry Staphylakis has joined me in the Diamond Lane to tell us more about this year's festivities and performances. Welcome back to Classic 107, Harry. Yeah, thanks, Simon. My pleasure. Oh, well, it's a pleasure to have you here ahead of the 28th annual Winnipeg New Music Festival. That's right. Oh, very exciting times. I can only imagine how much work goes into this. I, I want to begin by asking... Can you imagine it? No, though, I, 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 I can't. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I want to begin by asking. How, how are you doing? Uh, well, you know, a little bit tired, but also amped up. It's yeah, uh, yeah. one of those situations where there's a lot of adrenaline caffeine going. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I was just thinking about it. And, and you have to wear so many hats for this particular week-long celebration of music. Not only as a curator, but also as a composer. That's right. Yeah. So how, how does that how does that experience almost differ between those two roles, or, or are they more complementary than I'm, I'm thinking? They are very, very, very different. Uh, they uh, and therefore complementary, I suppose. That's right. Um, uh, they are different hats and it requires a lot of code switching. There's a totally different mentality that goes into creating art uh, yeah. where the whole point is to shut out the outside world and be able to focus in on my internal life. Uh, and doing something like this, the curatorial, the public facing side of things is the complete opposite. Right now, as we're talking, the furthest thing from my mind is my own music. Yeah. Although there's still something playing in the background <laughs> from the piece I finished at 2 a.m. Uh, so yeah, it, it's, a, it's a challenge, but it's a very stimulating one and it's actually nice. It keeps my attention tension uh, on something at any given moment, because I always have to be focused on something, whichever task it is. Oh, well, no doubt. Uh, I, I guess it was three years ago now at the Winnipeg New Music Festival that you were announced as the the incoming uh, WSO composer in residence. That's right. That was exactly three years ago and, in uh, January. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, the reason I bring it up is because uh, we shared that great article of yours uh, as, as part of uh, the New Music Box, right, where, right. where you talk about coming from, from New York and landing here with your, your slick coat and and. <laughs> Slicker cowboy boots. That's right. Is that right? <laughs> yeah, I was staying with my friend Elliot Britton, who's one yeah. of the composers featured at the festival this year, uh, again. Uh, and uh, he kind of made fun of me because I am Canadian. I'm from Montreal. Yeah, you are. Uh, and I figured I got this. I know how it works. But boy, did Winnipeg have something to teach me that week. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad glad that you're enjoying it as much as you are. So oh, I, I love it. I, I mean, I, let's get into this this year's festival in particular. So we're going to bounce through and highlight some of the formal uh, WNMF concerts. And I, I want to begin with the first. WNMF one Bremel Tovey legacy legacy. So we welcome back the founding conductor. Uh, can you talk a little bit about Bremel Tovey's legacy? Uh, it's it's a pretty major thing for uh, an orchestra, a professional orchestra, to be running a week long festival for twenty eight years now. That's entirely focused to contemporary music. Yeah. Uh, it's certainly the biggest of its type in Canada and one of the more prominent ones in, in the world. Uh, it's an ambitious undertaking. We know that there are many challenges involved in focusing on contemporary music and programming uh, style of music. Um, and Bramwell really took a, the, the bull by the horns by teaming up with the then composer in residence Glenn Muir, my mm -hmm. predecessor, to found this festival. It's an, an especially important time now. It's really a watershed year because we do have Daniel Reiskin, the mm -hmm. music director, in first, in now in his first year as music director of the WSO, artistic director of WNMF, uh, to welcome back as a guest Bramwell uh, and celebrate the fact that what he had started has lasted this long and has mm. flourished so beautifully as now Daniel takes the reins and, and leads us into the future with his new visions. So what do you think it is about Winnipeg then that supports this week-long festival. I, I, frankly, I, I'm not sure I know yet. Uh, it's, oh, it's only my third year here. Yeah. Um, and I'm still kind of trying to figure it out. Obviously, there's an adventurous spirit. Uh, there's an incredible amount of support uh, from it. I mean, there's so many faces that I recognize every time I'm here, every time I'm at, at a concert. Like the, 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 our WNMF patrons were such major supporters. I, I can't tell you quite yet. I'm still figuring it out. Uh, I, I think the thing that also continues to blow my mind is that this happens in, in January and, and the beginning of February. <laughs> right. Uh, when we are, I, I think, the most motivated to, to leave our homes and, and to get out and to explore new music and contemporary sounds. It's a very, very thrilling thing. It absolutely is. Maybe it's that. Maybe it's the hardiness of the prairie disposition. That yeah, we're a proud we're, people. We're a proud people, <laughs> but we're also able to ha handle the minus 20 or lower uh, temperatures and go out and, and be part of the community and be artistic citizens and, and fellow humans enjoying this kind of music together.
And so uh, looking at uh, WNMF uh, 1 and Bramwell's legacy, it's that idea of performing the work which also began it all, right? That, that music of John Adams. Harmony Lara. Can you talk a little bit about that work for people who are maybe not familiar with it? Sure, of course. Uh, John Adams is, is one of the more prominent uh, American composers of the 20th and 21st century, mm-hmm. uh, still very much active in mm-hmm. creating beautiful music. Um, he... This piece in particular, it came out in the 1980s when there was like no contemporary music being programmed by major organizations, by by orchestras. It had uh, contemporary music had been relegated to smaller concerts and chamber mm-hmm. music and that kind of thing. Um, so this was one of the first major commissions of orchestral uh, new music, American music, uh, and made a splash. It was an important piece, and y- you can read about it and look it up. It's really interesting. To him, it's a manifesto about the state, exactly that problem, about the state of classical music at what it had, it had come to in, in the era, era of the agony of modern music, as he calls it, and that he wanted to make a bold statement that it doesn't have to be agony. It could be a great pleasure as well. Hmm. Yeah, well, that's that's really something. Uh, I mean, uh, uh, thinking about it, it's it's, it's sort of like a, a symphony, not symphony. Is that is that a good way to put it, or, or not so much? It's just a symphonic exploration, if you will. It, it, it it's very much a symphony in all but name. It's, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, it is in three movements, so not maybe Beethoven's four movements, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as far as I could tell, it is pretty symphonic. But he doesn't call it that, so let's respect the composer. <laughs> all right, totally, totally. Uh, also on the program, uh, some names very familiar. Of course, there's some of your music that is on the program. Program, Biddle yes. Factor, uh, along with uh, Kelly Marie Murphy and uh, Jocelyn Morlock, mm. names familiar to, to the Winnipeg uh, music scene, I am sure. Um, so kind of Canadian composers complementing the music of John Adams. And then from there, the next day at WNMF2, we highlight some Canadian performers. Right. Can, can you talk about those ensembles making of their course. debut here in town? Yeah. Uh, Collectif Neuf uh, is a string ensemble uh, and uh, Architect Percussion is a percussion quartet. So they teamed up and created this project, uh, my back, my backyard somewhere, where they commissioned five composers, all Canadian. So it's also Canadian composers who are being featured, including Winnipeg's own Elliot Britton, mm-hmm. um, who responded to a text by Kay Kelloff, a Montreal uh, writer, uh, and. Each were tasked, uh, the text itself is about community, it's about coming together. And these composers were tasked with, in their own way, interpreting that text in a totally instrumental context. So they're not necessarily using that text, it's not being sung, um, but creating some kind of musical concept, some kind of production uh, that would evoke the ideas within the text and is accompanied by video imagery Mm -hmm. uh, projections that are each tuned to each of the composer's styles and the pieces that they came up with. Uh, There's a a lighting show. really a, a, quite a production. And these are both Montreal ensembles, Collectif Neuf and Architect Percussion, who are both fantastic. Uh, at least Architect has performed in Winnipeg before, but not at WNMF. Yeah. Um, so yeah, really excited to have them come here and, and present this project to us. It's well, a big did, undertaking. When did you first work with them? With Architect? Oh, uh, I, I had been part of a, a group commission of uh, Canadian and American composers uh, in when was that? 2013 or 2014? It was some time ago, but yeah. I've known the players for a long time. Uh, Alessandro Valiante played in, and Noam Beardstone actually played in uh, a couple of my orchestra pieces when I was at McGill with them. I've known Ben Reimer forever. We actually played together on a CBC uh, show at some point. Hmm. Um, so yeah, they're, they're good friends and, yeah. uh, you know, just an awesome ensemble. Well, just making that Montreal connection, of course, is something right. that, uh, you know, you, you want to bring up. And, and that idea of it being more than just the music, right? The production that goes into it, the, oh, the yeah. multimedia aspect, and just the, the kind of the plethora, the, the overwhelming senses that you get to experience uh, at these oh, concerts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they, they're coming with a whole team. It's quite a production. So oh, you should no, definitely no. check it out. Uh, so, I mean, you mentioned your time uh, at, at McGill uh, before you made your way south of the border. Mm-hmm. And one of, I guess, kind of uh, the initiatives that you started, I believe, uh, mm-hmm. as as uh, a co-curator and director uh, was this idea of orchestral voices of the future as it's titled. Mm-hmm. Right. Uh, and, and highlighting young composers. Uh, I, I'm curious, where did this idea stem from, this idea of giving young composers the chance to not only write music, but to, to work with an orchestra and to experience all that comes with symphonic writing. Yeah, really well put. Uh, so that concert, Orchestral Voices of the Future, which is on Monday on the 28th, is the public-facing fi- public, public facing part of the WNMF Composers Institute, which is the, 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 the institution that I founded with the orchestra in my first year. This is now our third year, uh, which is very much about bringing emerging Canadian composers, young, talented composers, into the orchestral world, which 
is, I, I don't know if the listeners here know how difficult it is as a living composer to break into the orchestral world, yeah. uh, but it is a massive uh, logistical managerial challenge. Um, and so uh, in order to get good at writing orchestra music and at doing that kind of thing, well, you need to be doing orchestra music. Yeah, of course. But how do you do orchestra music if you're not all, right? So yeah. it's, a, it's a chicken and egg kind of situation. So this is a way to immerse the composers into the, the, into the inner workings of a major uh, new music festival, of a professional orchestra, to work closely with mentor composers who've been doing this forever. Jocelyn yeah. Morlock and Kelly Marie Murphy uh, are working with me as mentors to guide the composers through the process over months. I mean, we started this uh, in the summer. Uh, and this was inspired by my own experience doing something similar with the American mm -hmm. Composers Orchestra in uh, 2014 uh, at the Underwood New Music Readings. And my, I had this piece, Brittle Fracture, actually was premiered at the New York Philharmonic's Biennial Festival in 2014 as part of an exa exactly this kind of program. And it was formative, and I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be with the WSO if it weren't for that. Huh. And it's such a beautiful way to pay it forward. And I thought, well, we could do that, but even bigger and longer. So it's a full week and months of preparation and so on, but it's so worth it. And it's got to be so thrilling for the young composers. I mean, like you can sit there, you can listen to uh, some sort of MIDI file in Sibelius or Finale, but right. it, it is not even close in, not, in terms of that, just, not just listening to it, but just the experience of going, the visual like, look, oh, there, my, my oboe part, it is right. appearing and so on and so forth. It's got to be incredibly formative for them. It's all personal experience. It doesn't matter how good your software skills are. <laughs> Uh, that unless you've been in that concert hall working with the orchestra for many years, you don't know how the trumpet actually will be louder than the entire rest of the orchestra in that moment that you thought was perfectly balanced and so on. Uh, I, I used to study with David Little Tredici, one of the great American composers and orchestral composers, uh, and uh, I had taken an orchestration class with, uh, with him, and his opening monologue, to paraphrase, was something along the lines of, you shouldn't even be here. The only way to write orchestra music is to write orchestra music and fail at it for a decade or two. Yeah, learn by trial by fire. Trial by fire. It's the only way, and I have to agree, in my experience, that is totally the way it is. Uh, if you're just tuning in, I'm chatting with uh, Harry Staphylakis, the co-curator and director of the Winnipeg New Music Festival. Uh, Harry, I, I know this might be a little bit tough, sort of like a, a parent picking a, a favorite child, if you will. <laughs> but but looking at the program... You're going to do it. Oh, uh, oh, I see it coming. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> if there's one show uh. that you might be most excited about, uh, can you tell us who's coming to town? All right. So... Um, my, my, I think the best answer I could give you is if there's one show, come to two. Come to one <laughs> that looks familiar and something that you know is going to be cool and come to one thing that you don't know what to expect, that you're not familiar with, just to test yourself a little bit, because there's some really cool stuff going on. Uh, for myself, a huge thing is Animals as Leaders, who's yeah, one of the huge. really leading uh, progressive metal bands in the world. Uh, and I've been a longtime fan of this group. And uh, along with Daniel Reiskin, our music director, uh, and J.F. Aneuf, our VP of Artistic Operations, I, you know, I've been a long time metal fan. I used to make metal. Mm -hmm. uh, I still do that, but now with classical instruments, so most people don't notice. Um, and so <laughs> I, I thought, well, you know, Dale seems like a, a pretty open-minded guy and a great musician. Let me just throw some of this stuff at him, this progressive metal stuff. And I just brought it up kind of tentatively. And he'd be like, oh, yeah, Animals Leaders. I know them. Yeah, my, my son used to play it all the time at home. His son is a, a jazz drummer who used yeah. to be a metal drummer, so he's totally familiar with it. He's like, absolutely. And we were on the same page right away. This is advanced chamber music. It's really intricate, detailed, visceral. Virtuosic. Virtuosic yeah. music. Um, and uh, we thought, well, let's recontextualize it. Let's put it in the classical concert hall and hear it from a different angle. It's not a rock show. You don't have to yeah. bring earplugs. We're going to listen to it as if it's a string trio. But it's, it's two guitars not. and drums. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I was watching uh, some of their videos before before you came in, and it really is uh, mind bending what they're able to do. The the right. level of musicianship. Right. Uh, you're not going to be clapping along in one and three, let alone two and four. Like good good luck keeping track. Well, even. you could. <laughs> you could you're try. Really good at progressive metal. Yeah, I could uh, do and my, my progressive metal knowledge like is limited to Tool and Schism. So okay, like, yeah, that's, that's about cool. as far as I make it. There's a lot uh, of sevens in that. Yeah, there is. It jumps all <laughs> over the place. Um, but uh, I mean. Really, if, if people are looking for something new, to me, Winnipeg New Music Festival, this this is where to jump in. Right. But, but one of the things that I, I really want to touch on is you, you leave that that chamber performance right. that is their solo show on Tuesday, and then in New Visions, along with Daniel Reiskin, uh, you have arranged That's some right. of their music for Animals as Leaders with orchestra. This is the first time they perform with an orchestra. It it is, and it's my first time working with a band like this at that level. 
and it's a literal dream come true. I mean, I've been <laughs> dreaming about yeah. doing something like that with a progressive metal band and orchestra for at least eight years since I moved to New York, actually. Uh, and so when this opportunity came up and uh, Daniel said, we should totally do that. Do you want to see if they're interested? I'm like, uh, yeah, they will be interested and <laughs> let's absolutely do this. So we took three, I took three of the other pieces from their discography, uh, well-known pieces, Arithmophobia, The Brain Dance, and Mindspun, and treated them as movements of a concerto. So you really have like some kind of really intricate sonata-like first movement, a more lyrical, textural second movement, and a barn burner kind of third nice. movement, and wove them together in an orchestral suite or concerto with themes coming back and overtures and interludes wow. and that kind of thing. It's going to be awesome. <laughs> All right, so people are going to have to go check it out. Uh, last year was a very big year for the Winnipeg New Music Festival. Uh, it, it was record audience attendance, and I think a big part of that had to do with the distinguished composer. The one and only Philip Glass was in town last Absolutely. year. I was at the opener. I, I made it out to as much as I possibly could, and, and to see such a packed concert hall right. was uh, just, it was heartwarming, and everybody was just there for all the right reasons. Yeah. How do you follow that up? Who is the distinguished guest composer this distinguished year? Distinguished guest composer, Petris Vasks, uh, mm -hmm. a Latvian composer, who's been a longtime collaborator of Daniel's. Uh, they've worked together. Yeah. Daniel's conducted quite a few of his pieces. Um, and uh, he's a, a very uh, spiritual, thoughtful, sensitive, uh, both person and musician and composer. Um, so it's, it's really nice to have uh, several pieces of his. We have three on the main concerts as well as uh, at least one in the In the Community series uh, that are going to be performed that will give us a moment of respite where we kind of can settle back and enjoy the just beauty and meditative aspect of the music. And certainly in the symphony, especially on the, yeah. the second symphony on the Friday night, uh, it, it really grows to this massive um, texture and massive sound world that kind of keys into some of the darker aspects of having lived in, uh, the, in the Soviet world mm -hmm. for a long time. Uh, and that the, uh, his Dona Nobis Pachim setting is... Absolutely breathtaking. I, I've played Sublime it. is a word that yeah, comes to mind. Yeah, yeah, it really is something else. Uh, to see it in person, I mean, that's a sort of bucket list type of performance, I think. Uh, but also uh, to be performing here in, in Winnipeg as part of the WNMF is, is the ensemble Roomful of Teeth. And I want to kind of close things out by asking about them. First of all, they may have the, the best name in, in the history of it's choral ensembles. It's such a good name for a vocal group, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us about Roomful of Teeth. Well, for one thing, a key thing, it's not a choral ensemble. Yeah, right? it's a vocal on it, It's a vocal ensemble, ensemble vocal group. Uh, they call themselves a band or a vocal yeah. band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think of them as a chamber orchestra, having known them for a long time and seen a lot of them in show quite a bit and having worked with them now in residency at, at Mass Mocha in Massachusetts. Um, they're a, a trailblazers, absolutely, in the genre. In much in the same way our, our listeners might be familiar with Meredith Monk and Vocal Ensemble, yeah. who was you know, the, the distinguished uh, featured guest composer and artist two years ago at yeah. WNMF, uh, who really helped to innovate the use of the voice in classical music as, as an instrument, as, a, as not just singing a tune. Um, and this is something that Roomful of Teeth has taken uh, and run with in the last few years since they were founded, um, winning a Grammy, uh, being mm -hmm. nominated for another. Caroline Shaw, one of the members, winning being the youngest composer to win a Pulitzer Prize for her piece Partita for Eight Voices, which we're going to hear on Thursday. Um, so what they do is they uh, take, take up residency at Mass Mocha every year, every summer for a few, couple of weeks, and they bring a, a master of a vocal style that is unfamiliar in the classical world. Yeah. Now, these are all classically trained vocalists, but they bring in a Tuvan throat singer, an Inuit throat singer, a Sardinian uh, mm -hmm. traditional vocal style, yodeling, metal vocals to tie it back to, you know, animals as leaders and mm -hmm. other things on the festival. And they study with this person. And it's not a matter of appropriation so much as genuinely exploring how the voice was used in these age-old traditions from mm -hmm. other peoples. And they also invite composers along to witness the proceedings. And then they commission the composers. And they say, well, if, you, if anything caught your ear, if you're inspired by something that you heard that's new, use it however you feel is appropriate. And so they've developed this entire body of works that's so specific to Roof Full of Teeth. And no, really, nobody can perform it like them. It's a real treat. And if you don't, don't get to hear them regularly, they largely uh, perform in the US and Europe. Um, this is really a great opportunity to come check them out. Yeah, an uncompromising ensemble, I think, is the word on the website. And what a, a what a great word that is. Yeah. Uh, last thing I, I kind of want to touch on is, are some of the extended events that are happening as part of WNMF. Uh, things right. kick off before WNMF1 when Barmel Tovey returns to Winnipeg uh, with the pre-festival special event, Glacial Time. Yeah. 
Can, can you just talk about this very briefly? Yeah, so uh, we partnered with Peter Hargraves, a uh, arch- local architect. Yeah, warming huts. Uh, uh, n- yeah. Well known for the warming huts, uh, to design this pavilion sub zero, uh, uh, an ice amphitheater at the Forks on the frozen over river um, that uh, celebrates such a key component of what the prairies and what Manitoba and Winnipeg is at least for a good chunk of the year, um, and, and treat it as a positive and create an atmosphere within that environment where we could present some music that's related to it, that's inspired by nature. Uh, John Luther Adams, one of great, great American composers, also a Pulitzer Prize winner, uh, we're presenting his Inuk Suit, which is l- a word that comes from uh, Inuit uh, that relates to humanity's relationship to nature. Mm. And it, it came to him in a dream uh, in how we treat the planet, and particularly the more negative aspects these days. But in this piece, he wants us to celebrate our environment and to treat it like music. So we're, we're, it's meant to be played outdoors and for the environmental sounds, whatever they may be, to be part of the piece, mm. as is the case with quite a few of his outdoor pieces. Uh, and also we have Terje Isungset, a Norwegian uh, composer, artist, multi-instrumentalist, um, who's uh, coming and uh, creating, while here, out of the local ice, a bunch of percussion instruments and wind instruments uh, made from cool that ice, that? which is his thing. And he's created an entire body of works and a discography based on music played on ice. Oh, there's just so much happening for WNMF this year. Uh, Harry Staphylakis, thanks so much for coming down to Classic 107 and telling us about it. It's been my pleasure, Simon. Thanks uh, for I, I take it we can see you at the uh, the pre-festival uh, glacial time with a, a slick coat and maybe some cowboy boots? You'll or, yeah. see. Well, I got the heavy boots now, <laughs> yeah, but you'll right, see yeah, me at everything. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> if you're looking for more information about the Winnipeg New Music Festival, you can head to WNMF.ca. The pre-festival event kicks off on Friday with WNMF1 Bramwell Toby returning to Winnipeg in Legacy Saturday, January 26th.